Let me show you a couple of tips and tricks on how you can create better slides. Take a look at this slide right here. A very typical business presentation slide where we have a couple of bullet points and a lot of text going on here. My recommendation is that you take a couple of minutes and highlight your keywords only. And then you remove all of the, uh, the other text and you place it in your speaker notes. Because you really just want the key points or the key message on your slide and the rest should be why you're there to present, where you fill in the blanks. Once you have it down to these three points or four points, you can start playing around with the layout. So you could, for example, place it into circles and, and spread it out across the horizontal width here. And you have something that's much more nicer compared to the bullet point list that we're so used to. And if you want to make it more visual, you can actually add some icons to it to reflect each and one of your bullet points or key messages. So basically you would take a couple of minutes, go online and find some icons that work for each point here. If you look at the top and bottom of this slide, you will see that we have a weird uh, template going on here. My recommendation is always to keep it nice and clean so the focus is on your message and nothing else. And if you have a corporate template, you obviously have to stick to that, but the cleaner it is, the better. So here we have a slide I could easily present as it is. I could also add an image to the background. Some people prefer to that to give it a whole nother visual aspect. In this particular example, I prefer the top one because I think the focus is all on the message and nothing else uh, that's taking away the attention. So this is an example of how you can go from uh, before slide like this, that's very text heavy to a more visual slide that's easier for the audience to consume. Next, I'm going to show you three quick tips on how you can improve your workflow. The first one I call align and distribute. So imagine you have four shapes like these circles here, or you can have four text boxes and you want to align them perfectly with each other and to the slide. Normally, you could use these PowerPoint guides as you see here. Some people sit here and nudge up and down and try to get it perfect. And at the end, it doesn't look great anyway. There's a quicker way to do this. You simply highlight all of them by dragging your mouse across them. You go up to the Format tab. Under Align here, you can choose Align Middle. And then you can, in the, under the same menu, you can choose Distribute Horizontally, which creates equal spacing for all of these. Now, if you want to align this to the slide, again, highlight all. You can either right click and press group, so it becomes one object, or you can press Control G, which is the shortcut. Once you have it as one object, you just repeat the same steps. Align center, align middle, and you have the circles perfectly aligned on the slide. And now you can easily add text boxes under them or inside of the circles. The next one are the next one is two keyboard shortcuts that's going to help you improve your workflow. So the first one is Control D. Let's see what this one does. Imagine you want to create a couple of shapes and you want to copy paste them. Normally you would press Control C, copy paste, and you would place it and you have to repeat this step. Next time, try pressing Control D. It duplicates the object. And once you place it wherever you'd like it, if you keep pressing Control G, sorry, control D as in David, PowerPoint remembers the path you've moved and you can easily create perfectly aligned shapes. So you might wonder, why does this matter? Imagine you want to create a grid layout where you want to add text boxes. I just press control D, I place it here. I press control D as much as I want. And then I can just quickly create a layout like this and I can type in my key points here which normally would take forever for a person who doesn't know this shortcut. Now you can easily create layouts like this really quick. So that's control D, that's the shortcut. The next one is shift and mouse uh, key. What this does is that, imagine you wanna create a circle, a perfect circle. You don't need to guess what a perfect circle is. You can just hold down the shift key before you drag out with your mouse. And this way you get a perfectly proportional shape every time. And this is also recommended whenever you're resizing images. You see, sometimes we see distorted faces. Just hold down the shift key before you resize and you don't distort anything. And the third 
tip here is the quick access toolbar. What's the quick access toolbar? It's this toolbar you see right here under my menu. This is my own toolbar that I've created and it's very easy to do. Let me show you how it works. First, I'm gonna show you why this matters. You remember the, the four circles that we aligned earlier? We had to highlight them and then go to format, align, and we had to do a couple of clicks to do that. Now, I've added these buttons directly to, in my toolbar. So if I click here and here, I get the exact same results in two clicks only. Did you see that? So I've added align middle here, I click it once, and then I click distribute horizontally here. And that's how it works. How do you modify your toolbar? Well, if you just right click in your menu, you see here, you can choose show it above the ribbon, or you can show it below as I have it here. And then you go to customize quick access toolbar. And here is where you can choose from all the PowerPoint commands to the left here, and you can add them to your own menu here. So I've added the, my favorite commands, the ones I use the most, and this way I create my own menu. It's totally recommended. It's gonna help your workflow and you're gonna work much faster. Next, I'm gonna show you a bullet point magic trick. I'm gonna turn a slide like this with four bullets into a slide like this with two mouse clicks only. So let's see how this works. You just click on your bullet point so it's highlighted. All of these are in one text box as you can see. Once it's highlighted, you just go to this option here called convert to smart art graphic. Under here, you have a bunch of options that you can choose from pre-designed layouts and you just click and you get a new layout and then you can easily customize it to your own colors. You can change the text and so forth. So that's with two clicks only one and then you can choose which layout works best. So for example, in this case, if I'm going to talk about the next steps we're going to take uh, to improve our, our strategy in the future, I could go with something like this that displays my bullet points in a much more visual way compared to the listed format. So I definitely recommend you to explore this option here and see which graphics and styles. This can be a good option for people who are doing last minute changes and they want something more visual. That's called convert to smart art graphic. And I should also mention that there is a, a similar image magic trick you can do here. Imagine you have three images like this and you want to resize them or, or place them in a new layout. Simply highlight all of them, go up to format tab, and under here, you have the same option for picture layout. And here again, you can hover over and see which layout you prefer here. So you can easily create better layouts for your images. And this also matters, for example, if you have a team slide with a bunch of photos, you can see all of them are different size and, and, and layouts. Just highlight all of them, either by pressing Control A, as I do, or you can just drag your mouse across it. And under the same menu, I just show you picture layout. You can easily resize all images right away in one size. And if you want to remove the text box here, you can just go up here where it says convert. You convert it to shapes and then you can just click and delete these boxes. And this way I can quickly resize my images to the same slide and I can easily have a team slide like this. Next, let's see how we can work better with images. So this is usually how people place images on their slides. They basically crop the images and place them wherever they see fit next to their text. And this is the worst way of doing it because it just doesn't look organized or clean. My recommendation is to try to make the image touch at least three sides of your slide and let it bleed all the way out to the edges, as you can see here because this creates a much more visual layout and it's much more organized with your content. And you can decide how much of the image you wanna show based on how many bullets or content you have, like you can see here. And I could easily use it, the horizontal space as well. And again, I can add my bullets on top of the image. I can move the image down to put more focus on my bullets and so forth. And you see that the image goes all the way out to the edge of the slide here. And obviously, if you have very little 
text. You can also use full screen images as I showed you previously and create layouts like this. Now, how do you actually place text on images? I see a lot of people asking this. So the first option is that you add the text directly on top of your image like this. This works if you have no background noise. You have a lot of white space in your image like this example here, and the text can easily be read. Because if I place this text in the middle of this bridge image, it doesn't look good. It's hard to read. The same goes here. One easy workaround to this is to simply add a shape behind it. So you insert a rectangle and you place it behind your text. Very simple. Another way of doing it is making the whole image darker. So rather than it, this option that's very hard to read, I just make the image darker and my text is easily readable. And if you don't know how to make your image darker in PowerPoint, it's very simple. You just click on the image, go to Format tab, and here under Corrections, you can play with the brightness and contrast and see what works best for you. That's the easiest way of doing it. So how do you actually choose good images? Well, start by not using clip art images because these are very old school and they're not going to help you tell your message. We don't want to use bad stock photos. The bad stock photos are the ones you see on the top of Google results. They are overused, they're very staged, and it's very hard to identify with these. And next, we don't use low resolution images, which, which is a big no-no here. Again, I have a couple of websites that I can, uh, I'm going to share with you where you can get better imagery as well. So here are some good images. These, although these are stock photos, they feel more natural. They feel more relevant to, to, to us, I would say. Here you can see a person working on their laptop. And this is the recommended route I, I, I prefer to take. So for example, imagine we're going to create a slide with the message, we adapt to you. I want to say that my team adapts to you. I could go with a stock photo image like this, which again, it works. It's been, become pretty overused and, and it's getting a bit stock photo-ish. I could go with a generic image like this, where I just show a team in their working environment, or I can get more creative and use something like this. Now there's no right or wrong here. We could obviously go whatever route we see fit depending on our audience, but it's just to give you an idea of how you can think around images. Here's another example where we want to say we are transparent. You, we can use a, a, an image like this, which is not, which is very stock photo-ish, pe people staring right into the camera, or we could go with something more creative like this. And if you want some free images, these are a couple of websites you can use that, that are very popular. You can download as much images as you want from these options on the left. You don't need to credit the author, although it's advised to do that. On the right here, you see some websites where you can download icons. Now, the difference here is that icons, you need to credit the authors unless you're a paid member. So just remember that. 